guys welcome back to downtown rams as always i'm your host alexis craft join here with my co-host jake ellenbogen and guys we're coming to you live with episode 454 of downtown rams which sounds really really crazy to say out loud jake we're at 454 that's insane uh but guys real quick before we start the show i have very important news uh we've got good news from our friends at manscaped so you yeah you got bush you definitely do if you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. Taking control of your bush is important. These products are so good, you're going to keep showing pride in your new bush-free yard. <laughs> it's a fact that you will have the best kept nut sack on the cul-de-sac. Save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our discount code DTR for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. You heard me, guys. Do it. So, okay. so yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, back to the Rams, Jake. Um, listen, uh, we are in that period of the offseason that is not that exciting. It's mm-hmm. like that weird window between now and preseason because everyone wants preseason to get here. We want to see them play. We want to have those fun arguments about who's going to make the team, who's not, you know, who looked good, who didn't, all that good stuff. And now we're just kind of in a period where, you know, the teams are practicing. Uh, They are, you know, obviously having team meetings and stuff. And, yeah, I don't really know what we should talk about first, Jake. Do you have any thoughts? Well, uh, you know, I thought it was really interesting the other day. uh, The whole, I don't know, there was like a mini debate. I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but like Richard Sherman kind of came out and said like, you know, Jalen Ramsey, you're doing a good job, but you're not quite there yet without actually saying it. you're not quite there yet. And, you know, among the best of the best at the quarterback position, it's really like, I would say me and like Patrick Peterson. And so I thought this was hilarious because I think Jalen Ramsey's already better than Patrick Peterson. But, um, you know, I, I thought that might be an interesting way to kick off the show. Cause that was like kind of thought provoking. Like people really started to be like, wait, Like, is Jalen Ramsey already a top 25 corner all time? That might be a little too soon to say that, but I mean, he's certainly in that discussion. And, you know, I just think it's funny because I made a joke about it on Twitter the other day. or Actually, I think it was yesterday. It was like Jalen Ramsey has to play like 10 more seasons and average like because right now he averages about three touchdowns giving up a season. So if he were to average, you know, that same average of touchdowns given up per season, play 10 more seasons that's 16 to Patrick Peterson's 11 uh it still wouldn't be as many touchdowns as Patrick Peterson has given up so um you know I do feel like there's he he is somewhat overrated uh I do think Sherman's fantastic he only gave up 18 his entire career but I want to get your thoughts on that because I don't know if you saw there was a little Twitter debate I know you know some of the uh the draft Twitter you know tape heads got really upset with me um calling Patrick Peterson overrated but I've I'm just going to say what I believe in. And uh, I think it was more so just funny how it was like, yeah, you know, Jalen's the standard today, but like, he's not quite there yet. I kind of disagree if you're going to include Patrick Peterson. Yeah. I, I saw something about that, like with, you know, Jalen and the corner rankings and all that. I didn't really look into it uh, that much. Uh, I know that Richard Sherman was involved because I, I just saw the names floating around um but no i think i think richard sherman is incorrect i think jalen ramsey is the best corner in the league right now and if you're gonna have the conversation and you know if richard sherman's gonna say him and patrick peterson i think jalen ramsey belongs in that conversation um you know talk about jalen ramsey being 25 all time you know maybe but even if he's not i think what's really cool about jalen ramsey 
is he's just a different type of quarter cornerback, excuse me. Um, so it is almost in a weird way, weird that people would try to compare him to these other corners when there's really not off the top of my head that I can think of at the moment, any other cornerback that I've seen play like Jalen Ramsey in my lifetime, you know, just in his style of play, his aggressiveness, uh, his coverage, you know, not to say that there hasn't been other cornerbacks or arguably better cornerbacks. I'm not saying that. I think that, you know, pe- people can have that conversation and that would be a really long conversation that we're not going to get into on the show. But um, yeah, I think it's just really funny. Um, sorry if you guys hear that really loud crackling in the background. There's a noise outside. Um, <laughs> but what's really interesting is I just saw this poll where, and I don't know if you saw this, Jake, where like, League executives, players, and coaches all voted the top 10. Did you see that? I saw the linebacker one. I was like, Tremaine Edmonds was ahead of Bobby Wagner. Yeah, but it's exactly it. So I don't. All right. (laughs) It was interesting. It's interesting because it's like hard to be like the players and coaches don't know what they're talking about. But at the same time, like in a weird way, do players and coaches don't know what they're talking about? (laughs) Well, in a weird way. Also, it's like they are playing in the games every week. They don't have time to watch as much as we do. Actually, that might be stupid to say, but like, no, you know what I mean, no, you're, you're spot on. Um, like that's it, my thing is like, they are only seeing what they see in person in a game. Yeah. Or if they watch some film, but they're not watching every linebackers film every week. You know what I mean? Well, it's funny you say that. Cause like when I'm talking like, you know, towards the end of camp and, and you know, talking about cut days and talking about it, you know, with my father, we go over the 53 and like who was going to make it and whatnot. And like, we always kind of, you know, find certain guys that we think the Rams should keep. And then they end up cutting and, you know, kind of have like a debate about it. And, you know, he's always brought up the term, like, or, or like the, the thought process of the, it, it sounds weird to say this, but it, it like the coaching staff is almost too close to the action that you feel like sometimes they can miss something. And I feel like that kind of, if you agree with me, that kind of goes with what you're saying and that, you know, you're really close to the action. Yeah, but you don't see it from a different lens. And I understand they study the tape and everything, but you don't have time. Like you're studying tape to get ready in game plan. You're not right. like diving into the film, so to exactly. speak. You know, you're just trying well, to to create a game plan for that week. And you know? when you're looking at a player from that perspective, you're looking at how to play against a player. You're not looking at, what that player is or who they are if that makes sense so you're looking i mean you're the watching tremaine that player. thing i have tremaine anchor tremaine Edmonds. that Edmonds. well that was surprising well they did do the cool the reason i brought it up is because they did corners and jalen ramsey was number one which so, is correct which I is mean, what you would suspect and it was interesting because there was a ram in every defensive category i think except one and i'm slipping my mind i think it was safety where they did uh or and did we have an ed- oh and edge? So I guess not every single one, but you know, Bobby Wagner, Aaron Donald, and Jalen Ramsey were on the list. I thought there was one more. I'm pretty sure there's one more. Slipping my yeah. mind, maybe not. But it was just interesting to see, and I think it, it is interesting. And I also think that like I think it's good. I think it kind of gives Jalen like some fuel. Like I, I think know. it does too, but so I would I, also say this: he's not playing the traditional cornerback. I don't think anybody's ever played what Jalen's playing. He's playing the star, and so right. you know he's asked to do way more. And so I I found that really funny. The argument for Patrick Peterson was that well he just takes on the number one. And I'd be like, you know that used to be really impressive when I when I would hear that, but now I honestly don't think it's as impressive. And you know why? Because if you're just shadowing the same receiver. You get to know their tendencies. You get to study one receiver. That's your job, right? Well, if you're playing in the slot and you're playing safety and you're playing boundary and all of that, you have to learn all different, right? So you're going up against different skill sets, different body types, different speed, you know, different everything, different combinations. And so Jalen's ability to cover any type of receiver to me is what makes him so impressive. And what I find funny is, is I believe he only gave up like three touchdowns last year. And he did give up two in the postseason. He gave up one to Mike Evans. Actually, he gave up three. He gave up one to Mike Evans, one to Jamar Chase, and one to uh, T. Higgins. And 
let's be honest here. T. Higgins wouldn't throw that out. He literally like raked the face mask. But, you know, good players still get beat. I mean, the best player in the major leagues is hitting the ball three times out of 10 and getting on base, you know? Right. So, I mean, you're failing seven other times. It's like the same thing in football. You know, as great as quarterbacks are, they still make mistakes. They still throw picks. Corners are still going to get beat. Um, And also, he's playing a a tougher, again, a tougher job, a tougher role. So I just thought that was kind of funny, like the idea where, and I'm not even saying Sherman was hating on him, but like it was thinly veiled, like. But also keep in yeah, mind, yeah, you aren't who, there yet. <laughs> keep in mind who Richard Sherman is and his kind of general. And I'm I don't have a problem with Richard Sherman, but he has almost a very Jalen Ramsey like attitude. It's true. If you look back at Jalen Ramsey, or you look back at Richard Sherman's like career, and you look at Jalen Ramsey, they have the same attitude. And it is a very, for better or for worse. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's a very kind of big ego like think very highly of them and they have a right to but they're open about it you yeah. know you think of you think of the what was it when richard sherman's viral clip or whatever you think of that so you think of like in a way i don't think i think jalen ramsey could be the most amazing player the nfl has ever seen and i don't think richard sherman would like give him the credit does that yeah. make sense I just thought it was funny how, like, he did that whole, like, and yeah, it does make sense, but I just thought it was funny how he did that whole, like, yeah, you know, like, me and, like, Patrick Peterson, it's, like, that it's meme a weird where it's, choice. like, it's a well, weird it's, like, choice. that meme where the guy's, like, wait, where'd this guy come from? Like, you literally tried to slide him in there, think we wouldn't notice? Like, that's how right. I felt. Like, Richard Maybe Sherman, buds. like, Richard Sherman in his career, and he just finished his career, so we think. I mean, I know he's gonna be in TV, who knows if he comes back, but he just finished his career with 18 touchdowns given up. That's as many as Ramsey has right now. So Sherman is on another level, but the, I don't know. I just thought it was funny, like throwing in Patrick Peterson there. I mean, maybe like, obviously you talk about Revis, you talk about Sherman, but Patrick Peterson, I don't, I don't know. That was interesting stuff. I mean, it was, you know it was funny. interesting. I have a friend named Tony who lives in St. Louis. You guys might know him. He's actually like a very well-known like sports commentator on Twitter. Tony X. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So Lou City, very into hockey. It's mostly hockey um, that he's into. Uh, but anyways, he is at Disneyland in California. He doesn't live in California. He lives in St. Louis, but he's at Disneyland in California right now. And he met Jalen Ramsey today. And had like a really cool exchange with him, and he tweeted it, and he was like, "I'm living, you know, Alexis Craft's dream or whatever." That's and I was funny. like, "You're not even a Rams fan anymore." You know, he was someone who used to be a Rams fan; he's not anymore. And he had a really cool like interaction with Jalen Ramsey, and uh, yeah. So if you guys wanted to know today, Jalen Ramsey was at Disney World or Disneyland, I should say. Uh, in Interesting. Anaheim. Uh, but yeah. That that's kind of funny because when he tweeted me that, I was like, "What are the odds that you would run into Jalen Ramsey um, before I would get to talk to him in any capacity?" But anyways, Jake, let's see what else uh, Rams news. Um, well, I was you know, trying to bring up that linebacker list. I couldn't. I couldn't find. Oh, it. it's so it was like given to so da uh, Dov. Uh, I've Kleeman Kleiman Kleiman. I think oh, it's off ball, um, right? Is that what I thought yeah. it was. Re- I thought it was. They reported it to ESPN. Yeah. So ESPN. Bobby Wagner okay. was eight. So, so he's and, eighth. Jordan and Brooks Rick, is already in the top ten, which that is that was what. See, wow. it wasn't the Tremaine. It, that was what got me. No shade to Jordan Book Brooks. Well, but. Tremaine Edmonds is way too high. I mean, I know Bills fans that are like, "Can we get him out of here?" Like Bills fans don't even want him. So, I I I don't understand wagner at eight i think wagner's I better than be davis and i want to have this conversation but real quick guys for everyone who keeps wanting me to do asmr i'm going to open this can of olipop here <laughs> next to my mic mid-episode okay i'm so don't say i've never done anything style. for you um but <laughs> i just want everyone to hear this one That was that somewhat satisfying. Cool? I can't. Was even it lie. not? It, it, it was pretty um, damn satisfying. And everyone like on my YouTube live streams uh, like obsesses when I drink Olipop. 
So I'm going to sip this very sparingly and save some for my live stream. But anyways, Jake, back to what we're here for. Um, yeah, Bobby Wagner, I thought should have been higher, but it was weird the way that they phrased it. Cause didn't they phrase it as like, I'm not looking at it. I know you are. Isn't it like linebackers who come off, who play well, it's, it's off ball linebackers. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So that's, <clears throat> yeah, that was like a weird, it felt like a very specific way to rank a linebacker. Which I'll but, be honest with you. I totally am fine with Darius Leonard being number one, but. Oh, me too. I mean, you have Mar- Micah Parsons there. You got Fred Warner, like those guys. Okay. If they're, they're ahead of, you know, Wagner, you know, fine. Uh, Devin White. I, I don't I don't get that. I, I I don't I don't understand Devin White. Roquan's been good, but I I don't understand Roquan. I don't understand well, Demario so, Davis. Okay. I agree with everyone on the list except for um, Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Brooks. Maybe not just, in the same. It seems funny to me though. It. It's like now that Wagner's a Ram, now he's eighth. But but Wagner would have been first well. Are last they year. doing it in? Right, and are also are they doing it like all time? They're clearly not doing it all time because no, it's right now. Gordon Brooks, it's right now. So like that was yeah. why when people were like, "Oh, Fred Warner," I'm like, "Okay," but like it, it could you could make the argument like he's a lot younger than Bobby Wagner. Um, maybe they're just it's kind of like recency bias, or you know they're just you know he's kind of going in his prime, whatever. But I did think Bobby Wagner was too low. Just looking at the other guys on the list too. I mean, yeah. Well, Darius exactly. Leonard, obviously number one. Um, you know, I thought uh, who, who was number two? You mentioned I'm number thinking. two was Micah Parsons. Oh yeah, so that makes sense. Fred Warner at three makes sense. I would I would put Bobby Wagner at four, if not three. But I, I'm like I wouldn't be super upset that Fred Warner was ahead of Bobby Wagner, just because I could see why people would say that. But I think it would be like Bobby Wagner third. If not fourth, well, I'll give Wag, uh, I'll give Warner three because he is fantastic in coverage. He which is. Bobby Wagner did go downhill a little bit last year, um, in coverage, but yeah, he's definitely four to me. I I think Devin White's gotten a little overrated. I I really do. I think Devin White benefits from being on the Bucks defense. That's pretty solid. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean I he plays next to Levante David. David, and yeah, right. I but mean, I also do I also do like him, but. Um. Yeah, I think he might he might be a little high. I mean, if Jordan um, Brooks is ten, then Ernest Jones belongs at least in the, you know, other receiving votes, honorable mentions. Which, by the way, this is one. This is where I gotta make a complaint. Okay, why on earth is Eric Kendricks not in the top ten? Are we serious with that? Are you? Are we moving on to Edge now? Uh yeah, but I don't think there are any Rams in the Edge. No, I know, but I just I we should just go through all of the thing because now I'm into it. Yeah, well, defensive discuss. tackles you have obviously. Well, Aaron right, Donald, but, okay. One. Yeah, Dar- um, hold on. Now I need to pull this up and look at it. But who I was, was number one? Kind of hoping that our guy uh, Greg Gaines would get some love, but I knew he wouldn't. <laughs> well, not in, yeah, not in a top ten. No, I mean like, like other receiving all- votes. Hold on, which where are you finding this, by the way? I'm I just sure Googled the ranking one. the NFL's top ten. And then stuff came up. But it's really okay. not a perfect that... job by ESPN. Like I well, can't Well, it's weird. It's like hidden in articles. Yeah, yeah, like, like it, but there's not like a, a yeah, there's not like a link to go to all the articles though, which is bothering me. I'm gonna find it on Twitter from Dove Dove. Also the the safety one's a little odd. The fact that uh, Blitz Boy, uh, Jamal Adams, is still in the top 10 is confusing. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code DTR. Shake what your mama gave you? Nah, shake what your daddy gave you. God. That make, <laughs> yeah, that made no sense. I'm pulling up because I don't know. Andre Diggs didn't even make the top 10. He was an all pro. Okay, so know, let's man. start. Let's go to let's. Okay, so we talked about linebackers. Let's start at corner. Just because we just talked about Jalen Ramsey and I brought it up, so they had Jalen Ramsey, mm-hmm. Marshawn Lattimore, 
That's a little surprising. He's really that fallen was, under the radar. Him, him over Jer Alexander. I would say, uh, like Xavier, because it was Jalen Marshawn Lattimore, Alexander, Xavier Howard, J.C. Jackson, Denzel Ward, Pat Sertain, Marlon Humphrey, AJ Terrell, um, Trayvon Diggs. What I can't understand here, and I'm going to click a different link. How were they ranking the cornerbacks? Because they were. How ranking is Marlon the line... Humphrey eighth? <laughs> well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, are, are they ranking them? like they were ranking the linebackers like by off ball. Is that what they're trying to do? Cause I'm confused. They, that's the thing about this article and the way that ESPN just casually no, it's announced just this. Straight it's not up specific. Corners. So the just straight up best corners in the league. Yeah. And I guess they haven't certain. announced everything else. So like offensive lineman interior is tomorrow. Quarterbacks is the 11th. Running backs is the 12th, wide receivers the 13th, tight ends the 14th, and offensive tackles. But it the just 15th. it just goes into like how we were like questioning like how players and coaches are viewing these players compared to us because like they ranked Pat Sertain above Marlon Humphrey. That's just odd to me. I mean, I understand That's Marlon Humphrey confusing. got hurt, but like he still. I mean, I don't know. Trey Tra- Trey Davis or, or, or Trey Davis Trey Davis Trey Davis White is not even ranked. Um, I think Terrell should be higher. I mean, he literally became a star last year. I'm fine with where JC Jackson is. I think Howard's a little overrated. I actually like Byron Jones. I mean, more. Trayvon Diggs, I think would be higher. Well, I know you and I differ a little on Trayvon. Yeah. Diggs, but like, I'm just thinking in terms of like the polling. I mean, he's behind Pat Sertain. And I know it sounds like I, I actually really like Patrick Sertain. I'm not like okay. on him. JC Horn played like four games and he got votes. <laughs> what What is this? I, I'm not seeing what list you're looking at because I'm just looking at, I don't see all the votes. I'm just seeing the top 10. Yeah. So uh, in the article. Oh, okay. I left the yeah, article. It, in the article, you like... go below the top 10. It says honorable mentions and it shows also receiving votes. And JC Horn is there. <laughs> He's on my dynasty team. I mean, he's he's a good prospect coming in, but he hasn't really mm-hmm. proven much as a player. I'm I'm honestly a little surprised. Uh, he's listed there. He played how many games? He had five tackles. He had five so, tackles. How many games he, did he play? Well, he was hurt. Remember? That's he, what I'm saying. So it's like he played three games. He didn't even oh, play as many as I first thought. Yeah, it, he didn't, and he got votes. Right. I don't know about that one. There's got to be like no shade NFL players, but you guys are definitely being a little biased towards probably your boys. And well, this is right. This is by execs, coaches and players. Okay. Right. So it's like, if someone's like, you know, you're like, Oh, you, you like sometimes might think your friends are better than they are. And that's okay. Um, Because clearly as we're (laughs) seeing with this list, it's like not adding up. So here's defensive tackles, Jake. Yes. And I know that you've seen this, but I'm just going to read it for everybody. So that way, like, they know what we're talking about. So it was Aaron Donald because, duh, Jeffrey Simmons, Chris Jones, DeForest Buckner, Cameron Hayward, Kenny Clark, Vita Vea, Eric Armstead, Grady Jarrett, and Jonathan Allen. Um, What did you think about that? I think uh, there's a, a snub here. His name is Javon Hargrave. I think he he belonged in the top ten. Yeah, uh, he came in the honorable mentions. I, I know Steelers fans are still upset that they let him go. Um, what about? I see Kinlaw? other receiving votes. JJ Watt. I didn't know JJ Watt. He didn't play defensive tackle. Do <laughs> just these sliding people him in know there what's going on? I, I I don't uh, know. What about? I thought Kinlaw maybe should have been. Uh no, Ken Kinlaw's he's got a long way to go. You think? Oh yeah. Who am I thinking of then? Didn't he not just have a really good season last year? DJ Jones. Am I thinking of Hargrave? I mean Hargrave oh, wait, was on the Eagles. Just... Wait, wait, wait. Who's there's a Javon that did really Am I thinking of Hargrave? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Everything 
Yeah, Javon Whatever. Hargrave okay. was really good for the Eagles. Um, DJ Jones for the 49ers was fantastic. He just got a pretty fat deal with the Broncos, $10 million a year. Because um, all those defensive players going to the AFC West. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not in that division. And I'm glad I'm not in the AFC, to be honest. Uh, so but this- it's just that particular division especially. The safety one obviously doesn't have a Ram in the top 10. Uh, Jordan Fuller got hurt. And, the I mean, you know, familiar face, John Johnson the third got receiving votes. But Can I was a little surprised where they went with this. So, okay. And it's funny because someone made a note here. But, okay. So, Justin Simmons was number one and then it was minka fitzpatrick kevin byard uh derwin james buddha baker jesse bates harrison smith marcus williams antoine winfield jamal adams notably missing from the top ten are uh tyron matthew Diggs, and hoyer yeah i have honorable mentions javon holland who just missed yeah. the top 10 he had a fantastic season um, also on my dynasty team Quandre Diggs, who was an all-pro, second team, but all-pro. Uh, Jeremy Chin. I, I'm a little surprised he didn't even make it, but Jimmy Ward, which is kind of a weird mention. Uh, Jordan Poyer, Tyron Matthew, Micah Hyde, Adrian Amos, Eddie Jackson, yeah. Xavier McKinney for the Giants, John Johnson the third, Darnell Savage for the Packers, and Amani Hooker for the Titans. I um I don't I'm not surprised that no Ram is listed here. I think Jordan Fuller, whether Rams fans want to admit it or not, took a step back in, in year two. And I think a lot of that is, well, first off, it's year two. You know, you have a really good rookie season, you're more prone to have a bad second year. He didn't have a bad second year, but he wasn't as much of a ball hawk and played a different role where this guy was wearing the green dot. So he really had to take ownership of this defense you know on a level what we haven't really seen from him and so i think for that reason he kind of had down year i think will be better in year three um i guess i was surprised to see jesse bates at six i think he has an argument for number one i would have had him definitely higher i mean (sighs) yeah how many games did derwin james play over the last like two years (laughs) yeah i mean i get I think Derwin James is really talented, but he is. He just can't like Justin healthy. Simmons. I don't have a problem with being number one, but I would have had Justin Simmons and then Jesse Bates and then Minka Fitzpatrick, to be honest. But and we don't okay, know. Derwin how James close actually played really 15 were, right? games last year. I didn't even know that. Gotta give him props then. Um, I will say so. I'm about to list out the edge rushers, and I will say I kind of felt like Leonard. Floyd was a bit of a snub here. Um, I at least in like, the honorable mentions. Yeah, I mean, just based on the way he's been playing. But so the edge rushers, they had T.J. Watt number one overall, then Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Max Crosby, Von Miller, Chandler Jones, Brian Burns, Cleo Mack, Cameron Jordan. I didn't really have a problem with this list. Like I said, it was more just like I felt like Leonard Floyd could have been at least an honorable mention i thought a guy who had like what 19 sacks last year robert quinn would have gotten more love (laughs) right well that's that's the thing is like we keep having to remind ourselves like this was like based on just like coaches and players and execs opinions and like how did i I also would be interested to know like what was the system did they just give you a piece of paper and were they like write down your top 10 cool mac is starting to become overrated alexis i'm gonna say it yeah, I mean, I think like he, people have a really hard time. I think with him forgetting, just like the insanity that he had for a few years, and it has stuck with people. And it's kind of like when a player plays on the level that Cleo Mack did for that period of time, it's like hard to imagine him not being that good anymore. You know what I mean? Like, but even still, like over his eight seasons, he has seventy six and a half sacks. So he's not even averaging ten sacks per season. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not one of those people that thinks sacks is end all be all, right? But when you have a guy in Robert Quinn who just, you know, he leaves Dallas, he joins the Bears, and it takes him one year, not even one year. I mean, he he already had more sacks than Mac had 
for his career high, you know, by like the end of the season. So I, I just, it's mind boggling to me. Um, they're also right about the same age too. Yeah. Like that's I, uh... the thing that I don't think people realize like Robert Quinn. I mean, he's probably older. Yeah. He's 32, but Khalil Mack is 31. And Robert Quinn has 101 sacks for his career. And he's played what? A little bit longer than than uh, Mac, but. Well, that brings kind of what I think the last thing that we should talk about on the show is, is Robert Quinn. Do you, because, you know, you bring him up. So we just finished that list. That was all the categories, by the way, guys, that were out. They're like, as Jake said earlier, they haven't, they're going to release all of them, but we only know like those few defensive positions so far. Yeah. So it's fine that we're moving on. We did cover it all. But Jake, speaking of Robert Quinn, do you think the Rams go after him? And would you be happy if the Rams went after? Because we know that he wants out of Chicago, which pains me to say, being living in Chicago and having a soft spot for the Bears and wanting them to get better. But he does want out of Chicago. So do you think the Rams go after him? Or do you think they're like, nah, we're good. Hmm. Like, what do you think? I think it, if it happens, it won't happen until like mid season, right before the trade deadline. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, I hate to break it to you, Alexis, but I was looking at all the rosters again and Chicago is set up to be by far the worst team in the NFL. Oh yeah. They it, don't have anyone on their roster it, at all. It, it's really not good. Uh, I feel so bad for Justin Fields. So I think we'll probably have a decent season, but because of that, I think, you know, the Bears will be in the market, um, you know, to, to sell. Uh, you look at, you know, Eddie Jackson, who I mentioned was an honorable mention for his top 10 safety, uh, you know, category. Um, and I think Robert Quinn would be available. They just lost Eddie Goldman. They lost Akeem Hicks. They lost Allen Robinson. It hasn't been a very transformative in a good way type of year, uh, yeah. you know, at least this offseason for the Bears. Now, with that said, because, you know, obviously I don't think that they're going to be competing. Um, I do think Quinn will get traded. But it's the question is, well, yeah, will it be the Rams and would the Rams be interested? I think there are, there are a couple things here. Uh, the first thing is that the Rams have a decision to make because it's not just, you know, Justin Hollins. Like, is he better than Justin Hollins and Terrell Lewis and Chris Garrett and all that? It's also, do you want to stunt anyone's growth? Because here's the thing, Justin Hollins, he's not even in his prime yet. Terrell Lewis, not even in his prime yet. Chris Garrett, second year guy. Daniel Hardy, our guy. Uh, this is rookie year. So right. the thing that it really intrigues me about this is that, one, the Rams don't have a ton of money. So if they want OBJ, they might really be deciding between OBJ and going out and getting a player later on in the year. Two, uh, it's the fact that the Rams didn't really address the edge position when Von Miller left. They're like, Oh, let's uh, sign a wide receiver. That's what they did. They didn't go out and get another pass rusher. A lot of people speculated the idea of going out and getting Hassan Reddick, who ended up signing with the Eagles. That did not happen. Uh, on top of that, Khalil Mack was traded to the chargers. They didn't go after him. So that kind of leads me to believe that they felt pretty good coming into this year about who they had. And I think there's a reason to feel that way. You look at Hollins and his ability to stop the run and how he has really started to develop in the, obviously the pass rushing department. You have Terrell Lewis who, yeah, he'll probably be on a pitch count or snap count the rest of his career to keep him, you know, stable and healthy. But if they do that, right, if they manage him correctly, he could be a really good situational rotational pass rusher. And then on top of that, you have Chris Garrett, who I think is going to fill in and, and really play that Okoronkwo role. And then that kind of leaves Daniel Hardy to get maybe some playing time, maybe not. Uh, without, you know, a Von Miller this year, Daniel Hardy probably sees some time, you know, with somebody like Robert Quinn coming in, probably not. So I think it really depends on that. And I think, you know, they're going to have to address this, uh, the, you know, when it comes down to, you know, the trade deadline. If the Rams are undefeated at that point, they feel like they're really good or they, they don't even have to be undefeated, but they feel like they're good then maybe they don't make that move. But they're sitting there with a boatload of picks. And keep in mind, 
the Rams having a second rounder is now way more important to them and way more. Uh, I think the pick I would say is more valuable because they've already shown you now the Rams can draft without a first round or second rounder and even a third rounder. They've done it before. So that's the thing here is that all of a sudden this team looks at picks differently than every team in the league. They might be looking at that as not necessarily like, you know, okay, we can draft guys with this pick, but maybe it's like burning a hole in their wallet type deal. And I think that's what we're going to find out towards the trade deadline. Yeah, I, I've been saying I do not think that the Rams will make a move for Robert Quinn because I do feel that we have a pretty crowded edge room. I know it's not like a flashy edge room and it's not like as it's not the edge room people want, quote unquote. But there are a lot of guys that have kind of, I think, in my opinion, I don't want to say prove it years, but somewhat. I mean, Terrell Lewis, Justin Hollins, you've got both of them in there. You've got young guys, uh, you know, Daniel Hardy, like you mentioned, Chris Garrett. So there are a lot of options at edge for the Rams, and I think it could kind of go either way. And I don't think the Rams, if they're going to give up any more picks, are going to do so on the edge position. I really don't believe that. I don't think that the Rams will trade for anybody, um, to be honest. But that's just They don't need to. That, yeah, I don't think that there's any reason to be giving up picks at the moment uh, if you're the Rams, especially when, you know, you've given up so many <laughs> recently. Um, not that I don't I don't think they care, but I'm just saying I don't think that they're going to go out because Robert Quinn is going to be a hefty price. I mean, you're going to have to give up a lot of picks for him. He's very, very good, and I don't think the Rams can afford to do that. So, again, I know it's like kind of like one of those things that Rams fans want, you know, to see – him reunited with the Rams I don't think it's gonna happen I'm still holding out hope he'll stay in Chicago but we'll see uh I don't I don't think that's gonna happen I think that Chicago is just having a fire sale and is gonna be in full rebuilds I don't think they have a choice do trade for somebody though probably gonna be Robert Quinn I would imagine. Well, if if someone told me, like if someone from the Rams right now told me we are trading for someone, guess who it is? Yeah, I would say it'd be Robert Quinn or some or another edge just because I think that's something they might be slightly nervous about because like I I said, like you could have someone come out like a Chris Garrett or Daniel Hardy rookie and just absolutely light it up this year. You could. Yeah. I mean, and then the Rams would be fine at edge, right? But we don't know that that's going to happen. And I well, think the Rams yeah. sometimes don't want to wait for that to happen. Well, then it also Not comes down to, yeah, but then it also comes down to what is the purpose to just win a Super Bowl? Are they a long-term piece? Quinn would be a rental. But if the, if the Rams are looking for a long-term asset when Donald, because keep in mind when Donald retires, which I think is going to be at the end of this deal, or maybe even sooner, Rams are going to open up about $25 million in cap space. People aren't thinking about that. So mm-hmm. while it, it'll obviously be upsetting and they'll have to change their approach because Donald makes their defense a lot easier to scheme and everything, they would be able to go out and theoretically be players for a guy like Brian Burns or Montez Sweat. And so maybe trading for them now, trying to make that work with Donald, and then knowing that you'd be able to, to bring them back long term, well, that might be an option. And, and that's something I think we're, we're going to see kind of transpire over the course of this year next year is that the Rams are going to start looking in the present and ahead and maybe they won't be necessarily a fan of those Sony Michelle rental deals but instead going out and getting a guy that can compete right away and uh right. and help them right away but then also a guy that they can keep long term and I do think you know Leonard Floyd's deal was not it was not given to him to be he was he's not gonna be there forever I don't even think he's gonna play through that full deal He's been very good and he's improved, but he is older. He's an older edge defender than, you know, the other guys that went off the market the year they signed him. So keep that in mind, that deal that they gave him. I mean, he's an older pass rusher. He's not like old, right? But I believe he's like, what, 29, Alexis? I mean, he's he's getting up there in age. Uh, Yeah, he's 29 years old and he'll actually be 30 in September. So he's not exactly young. The Rams could 100% if they see this as like helping them now, but also helping them for the long term. And they don't necessarily think that a Terrell Lewis or Justin Hollins makes sense long term. 
then don't be surprised if they're in the market for a Montez Sweat or a Brian Burns. But of course, I only say that because Washington, they're going to have to pay a lot of their guys on the defensive side. And, you know, who knows how that's going to go with Sweat. And then Carolina, I don't even know if Burns is going to want to stay there. Because if this doesn't work with Rule, it's another regime, the regime that did not draft Burns. So you always get into that, and anything's possible when it gets to that level. But who's not going to want to play for the Rams, you know, the the course of the next three years or whatever? So that's the thing, is that I think that's not being talked about enough, is that Leonard Floyd is almost 30 years old. (laughs) Like Aaron Donald is over 30 and now, you know, is we're just assuming he's going to retire sooner than later. Well, it's something to keep an eye on. I mean, I think regardless, nothing is going to happen in terms of a trade. I think it would be one of those things where the Rams see how the first couple games go. I don't think they're going to do anything before the season starts. Just no, no, no. It won't be until like the middle. Right. Right before the trade Um, deadline. We probably won't hear anything about it because remember the, the Von Miller stuff. We didn't hear anything about Von Miller. That's true. That just happened. We'll see, guys. That's going to do it for us, but we'll see. I mean, we'll be back. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have some exciting Rams news <laughs> in the next couple of days. Maybe. Breaking news. Hopefully not too exciting. News. Right. Hopefully not too exciting. Uh, but, guys, anyways, please, uh, as always, like and subscribe uh, if you like what you hear. Please follow us on Twitter at Downtown Rams. Our Instagram is still hacked, and sadly, we will probably never get it back. We'll keep you guys updated on you know the developments with that if if we create a new instagram or whatever and guys real quick i do just want to let you know that on my twitter page right now i am uh like i did last year i have a twitter thread pinned to my profile full of amazon wish lists for teachers across the country right now if you are interested in donating to a teacher's wish list uh please go to my twitter profile and look through all those wish lists there they sadly have to fund out of their own pocket p- pretty much everything for their classroom, especially in this day and age. And a lot of the, the wish lists in that thread are teachers that uh, teach um, in lower income communities. And, you know, the students really get a lot of benefit uh, from having a classroom that is full of books and even snacks. You can find wish lists with snacks. A lot of them just need hand sanitizer and like disinfecting wipes and just tissues and things like that for their classroom uh, that they need in bulk. So if you can please donate, if you can, if you're interested, or just if you want to go check it out, it is on my Twitter profile. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that it is there. But you can also follow Jake on Twitter at JK Bogan. I probably should have mentioned that my Twitter handle is the Alexis Craft uh, when I did that. Uh, but yeah. Guys, follow us on Twitter. Follow Downtown Rams on Twitter as well. We will be back next week with another episode uh, about the Rams. And guys, please just stay safe and take care. And go Rams. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code DTR. Shake what your mama gave you? Nah, shake what your daddy gave you.